Hello and welcome to another video. My name's David and this time I thought we'd take a look at creating a 3D matte style border. Plus we're going to add a little bit of a twist to it. Right, let's make a start. First thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to layer. We're going to come down to new fill layer. We've got blue, that was my foreground color. We're going to change this to white and just moving it right into the corner. There is our white fill layer. Over to the layers panel, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to place it beneath our background layer. And as soon as you come down, you see that solid line, that blue line, you can release it. Now we need to make this larger. To do that, we're going to head to document. We're going to come down to resize canvas. You can see I've got 3000 pixels for the width. I have got 2000 pixels for the height. We're going to change this from pixels. I'm going to select inches. But if you're more comfortable using millimeters, centimeters, you can use that as well. Right, heading back to inches, anchor point, placing this in the center will allow us to add this evenly right the way around. Now for this size image, I know that I need to add two inches to both the width and the height. So you may need to experiment with this depending on what file size you have, but I'm just going to highlight my Five. I'm going to press 7 on the keyboard, taking it to 17. Now, in theory, the padlock is locked, so this should take it to 12. In practice, it doesn't. Right, so I'm just going to highlight this area here. I'm going to change it myself to 12. I'm also going to unlock the padlock just to be safe. Now, clicking on resize, and there it is. We have now got it evenly to top the bottom as well as the two sides pressing H on the keyboard to give me back my hand tool. I'm going to use Command 1, Control 1, which is going to take us to 100%. Let's click down, let's come over. This is solid white, so there is no pixel detail here at all. So what we're going to do is come over to the Layers panel. It's a Fill layer. We need to change this to a pixel layer, and we can do that very simply by right-clicking. We come down to Rasterize. There's our pixel layer. Now, because this is a pixel layer, we can now apply a filter to it. So let's go to filter, noise, coming across to add noise. Let's have a look at this. I've got 21%, I've got Gaussian monochromatic. Let's go to split view and let's just move this over. You can see there's before that solid white and just adding this uh, noise there just gives that little bit of a texture to it. Makes it look a bit more like card as well, just a bit more realistic so we can click on apply command zero control zero will take us to fit on screen for the next stage we're going to add a drop shadow so let's click on the background layer now rather than adding a drop shadow using the layer effects what i prefer to do is come over to the toolbox we're going to pick up the rectangular tool which is the top one here of the list just make sure this is set to black so click in fill and taking it right into the corner there so now we got black I'm going to come to the top corner here I'm going to drag it out the reason i prefer this method so much is it can be completely adjustable so let's move it like this let's take it to the top corner there just a little bit further that will do nicely next we're going to click on it we're going to drag it we're going to place it underneath our background layer in fact we're going to double click we're going to rename it while we're at it so we know exactly what we've done with this layer shadow to make our shadow just a little bit more realistic, we're going to head down to this icon, which is for our live filter. Top one, Gaussian blur. Notice the way it's been added in. And if I just lift it up, we're going to take the radius up. And as I start to take the radius up, all of a sudden you'll notice it. There it is coming over the edges, looking pretty good like that. Let's take it a stage further. Let's go to this region here. And there is our 3D effect. Just to finish it off, we're going to come down to the effects. This is our layer effects. And let's go to outline, put a tick in the box here. Color, let's change this. Let's go for white. In fact, I'm just going to bring it in slightly. I don't want it to be a brilliant white. That should do nicely. If we just take the radius up, notice the way it's got the rounded corners. Change it from outside to inside. It gives you a much sharper angle. That looks better like that. In fact, I'm going to leave it on that setting, which is 13.7 pixels. Clicking on close. Job done. There is our 3D matte style border. 
I did mention taking it a stage further. Right, let's just fold this up so everything is neat and tidy and heading over to my stock tab. Now, if your stock tab isn't showing, just head up to view, come down to studio. There it is, stock. Just put a tick on the box there. Now, I've signed into Pixbay. I put in the search criteria of brick wool, but you can use any sort. You can just put in textures, you can put in wood and just see what you come up with. But I'm going to use brick wool. I've selected this one. And if I just click, if we drag it out onto the image, just releasing it, waiting for it to go in. I'm going to pick up the move tool. Let's drop it down into this sort of area here. Always leave just a little bit of a gap over the edge and just pull it out a little bit further here and pulling it down. That will do it nicely. Back over to our layers tab. Let's click on it. We're going to place it underneath our shadow layer. So looking for that solid blue line, releasing it. And there it is. Looks really good like that. Right, let's click on our shadow. I'm going to press Command or Control. So press, hold down Command or Control. Now click on the background. Both are now highlighted. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it into a folder. We're going to group the layers. Now you could use Command G or Control G. That's Command G, Control G, which is the shortcut. Or you can click on, click on the folder says trying to get his words right and there it is the reason for this is we can now move it we can make it smaller we can make it larger the drop shadow is moving in exactly the same way as our image let's place it around about here i want to give a little bit more space to the bottom right looking at it let's come down to our brick wall with this i think let's come up to layer we're going to come down to new live filter layer and if we go down to colors, there it is, vignette. Let's just lift this up. I'm just going to take the exposure to the left hand side. So we're going to darken it down on the edges. Let's take the scale up like this. I just want to give a little bit of a spotlight effect. Just taking it back down. That will do nicely. Right. Let's just close that down. OK, looking really good. But I think this border, I think we can improve on that. Let's fold this up. Let's unfold this. We're going to come over to where it says effects here. We're going to double click and I'm going to untick the outline. Let's go for 3D. Put a tick in the box here, taking the radius up. I like the way it's beginning to sort of wrap itself around here. Gives a little bit of a canvas style look to it. So we've now changed it into a canvas. We've got quite a bright line there. So I'm just going to move my direction in the touch into that area let's move it across to the side so we can see how it's looking with the image itself perhaps just a little bit more on the ambient just to brighten up the image itself there looks really good clicking on close right drop shadow let's click on it this is now live i've got the move tool and we can make the shadow there it is at the top we can take it down i'm just going to hide it from the top area bring out a little bit more on the bottom like this, perhaps just a touch more on the side there and the side here. That's why I like this method so much is it becomes completely adjustable. Folding it up out of the way, pressing H on the keyboard to give me back the hand tool. And there it is. There is our finished image. So you can have a 3D style border. You can take it a stage further. This is a great way of presenting your images. So go on, give it a try. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come and click that little bell icon. That way you'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.